everyone. Welcome back to our accounting tool 10. Uh, in this video, we continue with the chapter 9, the master budget. Uh, last time we talked about uh, our uh, financial budget, we said that you have three parts, right? The first one is capital expenditure budget. Um, so basically, it's for long term assets. And then you also have a cash collection budget. Cash collection budget is focusing on the timing because um, we said that basically your December sales, 85% will be collected in January, 14% will be collected in February, and 1% will be never collected. So if you ask me about the January cash collection, 85% will from December, 14% will from two months ahead, which is November, and then you also have the cash sales in January. Uh, so the my accounting lab has a, a problem practice, and then we also have the multiple choice practice. Okay, so next budget, we're talking about uh, the cash payment budget. So um, we talk about cash collection. So collection is different, just the opposite of the payment, right? Because you collect the cash from your customer, but you are also the customer of your supplier. So uh, if a collection is about the timing, then the payment is also about the timing. When do we pay for our expenses of uh, direct material, direct labor, you know, overhead, and then all the other things. So let's look at each specific item. Um, for the cash payment budget, the direct material purchase is important. You, I think you, I, I want my students to know this part of the calculation. Um, why? Because it's almost kind of opposite of the collection. So look at this example. Um, you have been given 30 days to pay your supplier, right? So we also have 30 days to pay our supplier. So we will pay our December purchase in January, January purchase in February, and so on and so forth. So you collect your previous month, that's when you collect, but when you do the payment, you go to the next month. So payment goes to future, you collect the collected the previous uh, sales. So your January, you purchase January, the direct material, but you don't pay in January, you pay in February. February, you collect, you, you purchase this much, but you don't pay, you pay in March, right? March, you purchase this, you don't pay until April. So our payment, is always one month after the purchase. Okay, so if I ask you, I said, if January you, uh, the amount about your direct material purchase is 211,125. So what is it, a cash payment? Cash payment in February, then that will be your cash payment. So your cash payment for January actually is from last year, December, right? So, okay, so if I ask you a question, I said, hey, your material, right? Your purchase of direct material, uh, your, your January is 10,000, your February is 12,000, and then you always pay uh, 30 days, you have 30 days to pay. So I ask you cash payment, cash payment, um, about the direct material in Jan in February, then that will be your cash payment in February actually just to cover your January purchase. Okay, so that's basically the logic. Um, direct labor is straightforward. People don't want to pay until one month later, right? So basically how much uh, hours you use to your employee, you have to pay them exactly the same amount. You have to pay them exactly the same amount. Um, manufacturing overhead, manufacturing overhead is about when you pay for your manufacturing overhead. Uh, for the others, you know, uh, we just pay when you buy, but there are some things, some uh, items that are special, so we want to look at those things. Uh, we, we call it as a non-cash item, we call it a non-cash item, so we call it those non no cash or non-cash items, okay, non-cash item. The first thing is depreciation expense. So it's your expense, but you don't pay with the cash, okay? So depreciation expense, depreciation expense, that's our manufacturing overhead. 
that is in our income statement, but it's not in cash. So we have to adjust from our expense to our cash balance. I believe in your financial accounting, last chapter is the statement of cash flow. We had the adjustment there. So your depreciation expense is the non-cash expense. It never appears in the cash payment budget. So we have all these manufacturing overhead expense. We need to subtract our depreciation because it's a non-cash expense. So let me ask you a question. I said, hey, your manufacturing overhead, the expense is 100,000, and the depreciation expense is 2,000. I ask you, what is your cash payment? What is your cash payment? Actually, your cash payment will be only 98,000, will be only 98,000, because you don't really pay the 2,000 for depreciation expense. It's just our accounting treatment. It's just our accounting treatment. Okay, and then they also said that for the insurance and the property tax, you don't really pay every month, uh, but basically you pay twice a year, you pay twice a year, uh, so it's not a monthly payment. It's not a monthly payment. Uh, similarly, um, for the uh, Samuel, and it, this is the property tax and the insurance, right? So um, it said, uh, what well, I want to say, okay, your insurance and the property tax are typically paid on the Samuel annual uh, basis. So you budget it is 3,000. So your budget is 3,000, right? Your budget is 3,000. But actually your cash payment is not that. So your cash payment doesn't exactly the same as your budget. Your actual cash payment is you pay half in January, you pay half in July. So you pay half of your 36,000, which is 18,000 in January, and then in February, you pay zero, you pay zero until you get the payment in July. So you also need to adjust for that semi-annual payment. But my main question, my main concern is about the depreciation expense of the adjustment. So this is a non-cash item, depreciation expense, is never paid by cash. Okay, next one. Sorry, I want to force my way to finish all this. Uh, so next one is our cash payment of the operating expense. Very similar with our manufacturing overhead, that part. But now we focus on operating expense. So we have operating expense. We do other adjustments. You have two items here now to other adjust. So your two non-cash item is depreciation expense, as we discussed here, and also bad debt expense. Bad debt expense is also non-cash item. It's also non-cash item. They will never appear in your cash payment budget. They will never appear. So those non-cash has to be deducted, deducted from your expense to get the cash payment. So let me ask you a question, right? I said, uh, your expense is 200,000. And then we found out depreciation expense counted as 4,000, bad debt expense is counted as 3,000. So your cash payment, your cash payment is actually it's a one ninety three thousand. You have to use two hundred thousand minus this four thousand minus three thousand. You actually only paid a hundred ninety three thousand. You didn't pay for depreciation. You didn't pay for bad debt expense. Okay, so I stop here because those two parts are important. I want you to understand and then also cash payment for direct material. I would say those three parts are the main calculation for cash payment budget. Okay, uh, we also have this income tax dividend. Um, I don't really worry. We don't really, I'm not even going to mention in this video. 
Uh, so let me know if you have uh, any questions. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.